It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Minnesota Vikings and the Denver Broncos. And it's coming up next on Madden Football. EA Sports coverage of the NFL has us at the foot of the Rockies just west of downtown Denver at Empower Field at Mile High. Coming up, we got a good matchup on tap here as it'll be the Minnesota Vikings taking on the Denver Broncos. Brandon Gordon here in Denver, joined by Charles Davis and CD. The Broncos are looking for a turnaround here in 2023. Coming off a five-win season and a last-place finish in the AFC West, but this doesn't feel like a last-place team. Nor to me, because when you look at them on offense, loaded with skill position players at wide receiver and running back, and then flip it over to the defensive side of the ball, and they can compete with anyone. They make it tough to run your offense. Meanwhile, for the visiting Vikings, we know all about the skilled players on offense, but they're looking to make up some ground on the defensive side of the ball this season as they were second from the bottom in total defense a year ago. What they want to do is find a way to be more consistent on that side of the ball and not rely on making big plays late in games in order to secure victories. They want to be able to stop people earlier. That's what they're looking to do in 2023. And off we go from Denver. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. Well, the Broncos offense gets set to go to work and at the helm in his second season wearing orange and blue, Russell Wilson. And similar to his nickname, Russell Wilson has a dangerous mix of skills. The ability to throw from the pocket and extend plays and throw on the run. Not to mention an absolute winner. Usually has his team in the playoffs competing for Super Bowl opportunities. Now the third year man back in healthy. It's Javante Williams. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive. First down. Anytime you hear the term an explosive run, most teams I know define that as any run over 10 yards. And they got that and more. How about a lot of credit for the big guys up front? That offensive line firing out, creating plenty of space, and a big run ensued. Wilson's throw taken in by Sutton. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. From the 44-yard line, here's second down and a yard. Play action. It's Wilson. That caught by Manhurts. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Now it's Wilson. The throw here right sideline falls incomplete. Here's second and ten. Play action. Now Wilson. Got a man open. It's Sutton. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. Five yards. Now it's third and five. Wilson will throw again. Work in the middle of the field. He's got a man complete. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 18. 18 big yards on that one and a Denver first.
So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Throwing is Wilson. And he's going to be taken down here. A sack back at the 32. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw up a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. So after the sack, a scenario you certainly don't work on too often. Second and 24. Now Wilson. That's complete to Troutman right side. And he's going to be out down inside the 20 at the 15. That one good for 17 as they're set up better now for third down. Now it's Wilson. And that is incomplete. This Minnesota D up to the task on the third down pass play. How about this defense? They came up with a couple of big plays in this sequence, and none better than the one right there, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. Now Lutz for the field goal try. This just 32 yards officially from the right hash. The kick by Lutz is good. And the Broncos, the first to grace the scoreboard. It's three zip. So the opening drive does yield points, maybe not the seven they wanted, but they'll take the three. Accumulating first downs does not go up on the scoreboard, but it does go into the DNA of a team that's trying to establish itself to start a game. That has to feel pretty good for them. They'll take the three. Yeah, they had three first downs and three points. Field goal, Lutz to kick it away. And this taken in at the goal line. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped it to 23-yard line. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. And leading them out, a player who turned a memorable debut into now a six-year NFL career out of Southern Miss, Nick Mullins. Brandon, I know he isn't at the status of some of the elite names in this league, but I do know he's an absolute fighter because he's heard all the criticisms. He's read the articles that say he isn't good enough to be the starter, and he absolutely does not care. All he wants to do is put every doubter wrong and show that he belongs in this spot. He got 29 yards that time. That crossing route is so effective when you hit it just right because you get a guy on the move, and then we see the end result there. It's a nightmare for the defense. They got a guy with a full head of steam. Not only does he catch it, but he picks up additional yardage after it. Show a first and 10 now in Denver territory at the 48-yard line. First carry for the Boise State Bronco, Alexander Madison. And a good push up front, and he's able to navigate his way down inside the 30. Another first down, this time on a gain of 19. Blocking at the point of attack there was very strong. He had a couple of running lanes. And I never want to overlook the offensive line, but that's what they get paid to do. How about the quarterback? Everyone thinks all he's going to do is throw the football. His movement and deception can help a running game as well. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. That pass just a little bit off. It looked like maybe he tried to force it in there. Game speed. Always different, no matter what you do in practice. You can't simulate it, right? So your decision-making, everything has to be a little bit quicker. Sometimes it can throw you off until you adjust. On second down, this is Madison. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Jefferson, but this is intercepted. And the Broncos are going to have the football here at their own 35-yard line. 
Well, that's a drive killer right there. Not a really confident throw either. This one was kind of up for grabs, and it's going to come down to hands of the wrong team. So now the second drive offensively coming up for the Denver Broncos. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and 10. After the interception, here's Wilson. And he will find his man Sutton. That's complete. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. They may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. Now Wilson. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. Brought down by multiple defenders, and it's a loss of 12. Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense, so he kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. Counting down toward the midway point in quarter one. On second down, Williams. So here's a third and 14. Wilson. A throw on the run, but that's going to be incomplete. So it doesn't look like they're going to be able to build off the turnover. Well, the defense certainly did its part. It got them the football. But you're exactly right. It looks like they're going to have to punt this one away. And it's not a turnover, but doesn't it feel like one after grabbing the momentum with the defensive play? Yeah, and they had all that momentum after getting the football and now zapped right back in the other direction. Dixon, the punter, is on as he sends it away. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. And the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. They trail 3-0 after the INT last time led to a field goal, but now another fresh start here, first and 10. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And that's complete to K.J. Osborne. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. Give him 10 yards there, and about by the nose of the football, he's going to have a first down. Back to throw here. Addison hauls it in. And he was able to shed one tackle, but could not get away from there. From the 43, here's the second down and six. They'll go Madison up the middle. And very little daylight there. He'll get a couple up to the 44. Third and four. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And that one too wide and incomplete. That makes him now 0 for 2 here in the first quarter on third down conversions. And now they'll look to their defense because they need them to step up so they don't fall further behind here in the early going. So on fourth down, Ryan Wright on the punt for Minnesota. Back deep for Denver, the rookie Marvin Mims. He'll send this one into the mile high air, and it's a good one. Fair catch called for right around the 11 yard line. A 40 yard punt, no return, and it'll be first and 10 Broncos from deep in their own territory. So first and 10 here for Wilson and the Broncos. 
at their own 12-yard line. Here's Williams to start the drive. And he takes this across the 15 to the 17. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. Now second and five. To throw is Wilson. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Here's Wilson. Screenplay set up for Williams. And oh, he's just going to be short here, barely. Maybe by a half a foot. It'll be fourth and inches. Boy, that was certainly well read defensively. And the key to any screenplay is space to work. And there was none to be found there. And they tackle it for just a short gain. Fourth down, so on is the punter, Riley Dixon. Here's Powell on the return. It'll be a 10-yard return following a punt of 45, and it will be Vikings ball, first and 10. And now out comes Minnesota. And it's been a rocky start for them thus far. They had the turnover and then the punt on those first two drives. So there is optimism because they've improved, right? <laughs> turnover, you just noted it punt's on the first better. Punt's better than the turnover. The punt is better on the second one. Now they're hoping to turn into first downs and hopefully points. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. This drive starting off on the right foot, 18 yards. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. So the ball moves from their own 41 to the other 41 here for first and 10. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Second and ten. They'll set up to throw. And that'll be off the mark too far out in front, and it's incomplete. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they have a few words to say to the QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. On third down, he'll drop to throw. That's complete to Justin Jefferson. That almost, but not quite. Needed 10, he got nine. Fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it. And then they could make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job here of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. And that hits the right upright and caroms away. It's no good. And instead of tying it up, they'll remain down by three. So plenty of leg, but it's the accuracy there that lets him down. Yeah, he hit it really well. I think this might have been good from 55. But you'll see it just conk off that upright, and they're denied a chance at three points. They begin the drive with Williams, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef, that they could let a tackler through, but that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. From the gun, it's Wilson. And this is going to be incomplete. Up 
An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Here's Wilson. Open man. He completes it to Judy. And they got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. A good pick up there, a 22. Third and one always tilts to the defense. And I just remember as a player how many times it was hammered into my head. Know where the sticks are and get him down in front of it. But sometimes what happens is you worry about where that is much more than the person who has the ball. And on that play, they didn't have enough focus on him. And somehow he turned a short pass into a first down. And he'll be taken down here as it will take us to the end of the first quarter. 3-0 after one on EA Sports. Second quarter about to begin from Denver. It's the Broncos in possession of the football as they've got it with a second and three forthcoming. They'll stay on the ground with Williams. And not much running room down to the 32. Give him a yard on the run there and that's gonna set up a third down and two. They'll try and run for it. Here's Williams. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. A pick up a five that time and a first down. Well, partner, they might want to tear up your scouting reports a little bit here because they just throw a tendency. Third down, you don't ordinarily see a toss. <laughs> they ran it and they ran it really well and picked up a first down. I love the way the edges were sealed, which allowed him to get to the corner. Now Wilson on first down. This will be caught. Judy. And he will reach the five-yard line before going out of bounds. A well-executed 22-yard game. They come out with one back and three tight ends. Now it's Wilson. Now he's got it. Nice job defensively to hold him to four, and now it's second and goal. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. Second and goal from the one. Williams. Will score. Touchdown, Broncos. Could not block that one any better. Everyone was accounted for, and a great surge by the offensive line. Will Lutz on for the point after. It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10 zip. That time, a nine play drive, and it was capped off by a Javante Williams touchdown. Touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. This fielded right at the goal line. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. Nothing for him yet from an offensive standpoint. Down 10 zip as they come up first and 10. Going to begin the drive here with Madison. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Yard. 
Second down and a yard. Now we've got movement up front. And I think this is going to be on Minnesota. Oh, moving from his tight end spot there. Do you think that perhaps the play call was for him? A bad false start penalty there. Now second and six. He'll look to throw. That's caught by the big tight end, TJ Hawkinson. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. First connection there of the afternoon for those two, and it's good for a first down. It's a nice zone breaker right there. Take the tight end, move him out to the slot, then have him run a corner route versus the zone coverage, which means he's going to be behind the, the, the shallow coverage and ahead of the deep coverage, put the ball right on him. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. I would say it might be a good idea for him to reintroduce himself to his receivers at the half because they're definitely on different wavelengths. But I also don't advocate waiting that long. Next series, before you get out there. Hey, let's get together, guys. Let's get this thing moving. Now a second and ten. He'll look to throw. He's going to find Jefferson open downfield. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. And that goes for a gain of 31. For an offense that has not found the end zone yet, that's a big play. There's the spark right there. The big play that they needed. Now they've got to go ahead and finish this drive and put this ball in the end zone. So after the big play, look at this, all the way down at the 15 now on first and 10. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free, and it's second down. When you run in the slant, timing is everything. And against that man coverage, there was no space available and incompletion as a result. An incomplete pass on first down, that leads to a second and 10. Again, he'll drop to throw. Now, a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. That's a big force incompletion there to bring up third and long, and this defense can still salvage a little momentum by forcing them to kick a field goal because just a few plays ago, it looked like they were headed towards the end zone. They missed a field goal on their last drive. Here, they need something to even get into field goal range on third down. They'll look to throw again. Touchdown, Vikings. A 15-yard touchdown grab. And the Vikings have cut it back within a score. Man, he just ran a terrific route. Extremely hard to defend when it's run that precisely and the ball's delivered that accurately. Greg Joseph on for the extra point. And they're back within a field goal. It's 10-7 now. So the drive winds up going 75 yards in seven plays. And Jordan Addison capped it off with a touchdown catch. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. From his end zone, Marvin Mims. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. Javante Williams and the rest of the Bronco offense back out onto the field. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter. Been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, you've really done some damage in an NFL game. And now he's looking just to add to his totals. Byron Murphy there on the tackle. You don't see that a ton, do you, with a cornerback coming over to the middle of the field to make a run tackle. That's someone with a ton of confidence 
to feel like nothing is pressuring him on his side of the field. Sees that the ball's moved to the middle and just sprints over there to help out. He ends up getting the tackle. More play. Wilson throw brought in by Sutton. Starting to rack up the yardage here in this first half. Five catches now and a first down. play fake. Here's Wilson. A short one to the tight end Troutman. No gain on the play. And it'll be second down. Now the old pass completion for no gain. Not something you want to call up out of the playbook too often. Yeah, most offensive coordinators don't have that on their play sheet. So they've got to go back and scramble after this one. But right now with what they're telling receivers about making sure you take care of the ball in open field, sometimes the fighting for extra yardage doesn't come as a result. That and good tackling can lead to no yards gained. Yeah, he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. A gain there of 30 big ones. I know we love our jobs, and pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. But big plays, let's face it, that's what we absolutely look for. How about that one? That was great. And what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Now a 10th carry. Here's Williams. And he's going to get this one down to the 30. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. And they'll run the end around here with Judy. And this is not going to work as planned. He's going to be met and dropped behind the line of scrimmage. They wind up losing a couple there, so they go behind the original line of scrimmage. And now third and 11 coming up. Wilson. They'll set up the screen. This is Williams. And he will not make it to that imaginary yellow line as they get him to the ground at about the 23. That'll bring up fourth down. They wind up getting eight yards, but they needed more than that. Brandon, it certainly looked like they had that play defended well, but it still almost worked. Got it to the running back. He wound up getting really good yardage out of it. But it was third and long, and they were able to rally and stop it before he could get it. And this is caught by Sutton. Touchdown, Broncos. 23 yards for the touchdown. And the Broncos' decision to go for it pays off with six points. Wow, talk about a big fourth down conversion for the score. Defensively, how do you let that happen? Yeah, I think you start with the offense, and you give them credit for going for it and having that type of, well, let's face it, audacity. But defensively, I think you're right on target, partner. There's no way something like that's supposed to happen in that situation. You're supposed to be able to shut that down and get the ball back for your own team. Instead, they give up not just a big play, but a touchdown. Touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. Nuwangu now from his end zone. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line, so the same result, and he opted for the touchback. Jordan Addison in the offense, out for another drive. He's been good so far to this point in the second quarter. Need to get him even more involved, maybe? I would agree with that, definitely. Uh, yeah, it's not even a question for me. The way he's playing, he's doing a nice job. Increase things, more touches, more opportunities. Maybe that can reverse things on the scoreboard for them. They'll try to ratchet things up then maybe here in the second quarter.
The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. He'll drop to throw. Pass complete to Addison. And they work this well upfield across the 45. 68 yards receiving now for him in the game. And a first down on that last catch as well. And maybe that touchdown on the previous drive has re-energized this offense a little bit. They've been kind of sluggish until then. But they're showing signs of life here. And they get good yardage that time and a first down. Back to throw now on first down. Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there were more people there to get him down. Two yards to go, second down. Here's Madison running left. And he stopped after a gain of one. Not enough. Still a yard to go on third down. Well, how about the big guy there showing some agility? He just flowed from his D-tackle position in order to make that play. The Vikings on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. Fighting through pressure. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. Five yards on the scramble, and that's enough to pick up the first. He really looked comfortable there, scanning the situation, analyzing things, feeling the pressure, and then stepping up right through the middle and sprinting for a first down. Here's Madison running on first down. Inside the 25. He'll get 15 and a Vikings first down. Defensively, they were in the 3-4. That O-line just dominated the D-line there. Let's go with a verbal telestrator here because that D-line has a nose over the center and it has a two defensive ends over the offensive tackles. That means the guards don't have anyone over the top of them. That creates a natural bubble inside. Where they sprint upfield, take on the inside linebackers. If the back hits it fast enough, there should be space to run. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. On running plays, linemen, of course, have their assignments. That's expected. But it's not often you're expecting to see a cornerback blitzing in run support and tackling the runner for a loss. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. And that went to the right side and incomplete. Try to find Jordan Addison that time. But now it'll be third down. The game clock setting at 2.02, so they'll get one play before the two-minute warning. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Pressure applied, and he's going to be taken down. They sack him back at the 33-yard line. Now Greg Joseph for the field goal try. From the right hash and call it an even 50 yards. The kick by Joseph is good. And they're back within a touchdown. It's 17 to 10. So he missed his first attempt, remember, but this time he gets back on the bike and knocks it home. Yeah, and sometimes that first one can really impact you moving forward. It can just stay with you too long and affect everything else you do during the game. In this case, though, able to shake it off. He's riding high again. Joseph now to kick this one away. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. Russell Wilson now gears up to lead the offense again. Five for five that last drive. Touchdown pass as well. He was clicking. Receivers, I don't want to be cliche, but running really solid routes too. And what I love about it is when you look across any team, all right, the body 
body types of the receivers are usually different. The way that they get open, different as well. Some of them use power to get open. Some of them use those head fakes and subtle moves. Some of them just use pure speed. And the really good ones, when they're established, they know how to push off at the end of a route, too. Second and 10, it's Wilson again. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. It's third and long now for Wilson and the Broncos after that sack. Up the middle, it's Williams. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Riley Dixon now to put it away. And he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. On oh, the return is Powell. 43 yards on the punt, seven yard return. And this offense will take over right at the midfield stripe with a first and 10. Good starting field position for the Vikings as they have it first and 10 right at the 50 yard line. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. This is caught by Addison. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. A good pick up there, 26 yards. First down, he'll drop to throw it. Looking for Addison again, and he's got him again. It'll be a gain of five, and it'll be second down. They'll look to throw. This one brought in by Jefferson. And he's going to be taken down right at the 10-yard line. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. They're going to hurry back to the line now. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. Joseph's got it. And that will cut this lead back down to four now. It's 17-13. So yes, they'll still be down going into intermission, but the deficit is now made even smaller, very manageable. Yeah, and if nothing haywire happens here in his last couple of precious seconds, they will go into the locker room with a nice bounce in their step, having gotten a little bit closer on the scoreboard. So barring a touchback, this likely the final act of the half as the kick is away. So we've reached halftime here in a four-point game. As now we send you out to Orlando and hook back up with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports Halftime Report. 
It was former Tar Heel Javante Williams with a solid first half. He wound up finding the end zone on a touchdown run to help give his guys the advantage here at the break. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. set to receive the second half kickoff and they trail it here as we resume play Nuwangu now from his end zone and no alley to be found the coverage was solid and he's dropped at the 18 now come the Vikings they'll have it first on offense as we begin the third and they're on the short end of the scoreboard here. Charles, what adjustments, if any, do you think they need to make for the second half? Well, paraphrasing the gold medal hockey winning coach Herb Brooks, I just say you continue to play your game. Throw the ball. They had success doing it in the first half, so make sure you keep getting the ball to your playmakers, a little bit more to the perimeter perhaps, but above all, play your game. This second and four. They'll drop to throw. And that throw behind his man. He missed him incomplete. K.J. Osborne, the one he was looking for. And it's third and four. Looking to throw. That is caught. Get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. to throw now on first down. And a quick throw there is incomplete. K.J. Osborne, the one he was looking for. But it's going to be second down. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. He's got this to Jefferson. And this is going to be another first down as he'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 29-yard line. That one nearly 30 yards, 29 officially. And at this stage, down in the second half, looks like they just wanted to find a way to get it in the hands of their playmaker, and they did. I think you're exactly right. I don't think the coordinator's looking at his play sheet and trying to figure out which play will work well. He's trying to figure out how to get the ball to the playmaker that you just described. Looking down at that sheet, you find people plays, not necessarily X's and O's, and that's exactly what they did there. Now he breaks free in the middle of the field, and finally taken down at the four-yard line. That's back-to-back -back plays of over 20 yards. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Madison. Going to take this down just short of the goal line. He got three, but could not get the ball over the chalk. Give him three on the game there. Second and goal. It is definitely hard to find space near the goal line. You always want to have a guy in the game running it who can create his own. Second and goal from the one. Back to throw here. Escape. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Nick Mullins punching it in from a yard away. And the Vikings have taken the lead as they go right down the field and score on the opening drive of the second half. 
What an effort there. Sometimes you hold your breath a bit when you see your quarterback diving for the end zone. You don't want him to land on a shoulder wrong or take a big shot. But he looks none the worse for wear here. And that winds up a touchdown. Joseph connects on the extra point, And that gives him a three-point lead. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. So now a look at the Broncos as they head back out there for their first possession of the second half. Wilson and the Broncos now with a first and 10 at their own 23. Throwing to start the drive. Wilson on the slant, completes to Sutton. And he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45-yard line. That good for 21 yards on the catch and run. And that's a good start right there. This game's changed pretty dramatically in the last few minutes. So now these guys are forced to play from behind here. And that's a positive first step towards claiming this lead right back. On first and ten, it's Wilson. Open man, and again, it's Sutton. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Now a give up the middle to Williams. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. This will be a loss of three and now a much tougher third down looming. Sometimes being a linebacker in the middle of the field is kind of like being a doctor on the field. You got to make the right diagnosis. Here he correctly sends his run and shoots through to make the play in the backfield. Now Wilson. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Broncos first down. He needed five, he got it barely, as it will officially go down as a gain of five yards. Well, we always hear about the connections some quarterbacks have with certain receivers. I think this guy has a connection with just about everyone. Didn't mind throwing it in there against double coverage to him. Shows some confidence, supreme confidence. Big time confidence that he would make the play for him, and he did. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Now Wilson. And looks to the sideline and has Mims who makes a catch. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. All that practice time came to fruition. Kevin O'Connell clearly unhappy with that call, and he's thrown that red challenge flag out on the field. Previous play is under review. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. After review of the play, the ruling on the field stays. So the challenge there does not go their way. This will indeed remain a completed pass. Now a first down carry, it's Williams. Might have gotten this one down to the 28, and that's all. 
Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. They run it again with Williams. Oh, a nifty juke there. Not much fun for a guy trying to tackle him. And he's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. They'll break the huddle and come up on the ninth play of this drive, needing five yards on third down. Throwing is Wilson. And a throw the open man. That's complete. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. A field goal helps, but a touchdown gets you the lead. That had to be the message transmitted in the huddle. And they delivered there as that throw is going to keep the drive alive. And even better than that, set them up with a first and goal. It looks like a jumbo set with three tight ends here for first and goal. Williams. Give him four on the carry there at second and goal. As large as the air attack has gotten him down here, but now is where you start to lean on that running game. That's a good pick up there on first and goal. Williams again. And he will take it in for a Bronco touchdown. Javante Williams with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Broncos have retaken a third quarter lead. Now he's given him a little jolt, just gave him the lead there, but two TDs now in the game. And that jolt puts them in the lead. What a terrific job by him. He is carrying the ball and simply saying, I want to win. And now he's hoping his defense has that mentality as they try to hang on to that lead. Lutz with the extra point, and that will make this a four-point game. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. This taken in right around the goal line. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. And now it looks like he's in some discomfort after being tackled at the end of that return. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. They had gotten the lead with the opening drive touchdown in the third quarter. Now they relinquish that lead back. Could be in for an interesting second half. It certainly appears that way, doesn't it? Almost turning into one of those pendulum games, right? Where it swings back and forth. And who's going to make the play that changes that? That maybe it puts it on one side and keeps it there. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. He'll look to throw. Throw's going to be incomplete. K.J. Osborne, the one he was looking for. Third down here. They're going to look to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. All right, let's just go ahead and walk through this one pretty easily, right? Blast off the line of scrimmage, get downfield to a certain point, usually around 8 to 10 yards, turn around and make sure the quarterback sees your numbers and set yourself up for the pass. A well-executed curl route by Charles Davis. You can just kind of sense the momentum turning here. It's first and 10. They'll set up to throw to Jefferson on the slant. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Second 
Ball on the 39. Here's second and a couple. Now a give to Madison. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. 93 yards here for Madison. He's got a first down. But I continue to hear from running backs and offensive linemen is how often they're actually getting together to watch film so they can get in sync with each other, understand blocking patterns better, how running back likes to cut, what he wants to do. And boy, it all came together on that one. That's one where they watch it and say, hey, we, we did everything we were supposed to do right there. That looked like the play we drew up Absolutely. and designed. And then we got to see it unfold in real time. I'm wondering, partner, if they might need to sub him out for a play or two because after that long run he just had on the previous play, he might not have all of his breath back. Yeah, and they went right back to that well. Different result. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. Oh, and that is incomplete. Jordan Addison, the intended receiver. And yeah, that'll make it third down. They'll set up a throw. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 29-yard line. Give them 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. Osborne motions left. He'll get it here on the jet sweep. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. Second and ten now. Third quarter action in Denver. They'll send a receiver in motion to the right. Now they show Jet Sweep, but instead a run up the middle here. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. That play never got off the ground. And a lot of times defenses want to disguise their intentions. Not in this case. They came full bore after him and really whacked him on that play. A big-time loss. Here's Greg Joseph now to try the field goal. That'll be a 49-yard attempt from the left hash. The kick by Joseph is good, and that'll bring him back within a point. So the response to that touchdown on the other side to begin the third quarter, look, just three points, but still a response nonetheless. You're exactly right about that, because I think you needed to answer back with something, even though it's not six. Just enough to send the message that says, hey, we're not going away. Joseph now to kick this one away. Now a hit and a loose football. And the Vikings pick up the football. And down inside the red zone at the 19-yard line. When you kick... And now before the ball changes hands, they're going to take a look at this just to make sure that they have it right. Now the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. The Broncos onto the field, ready to start their next drive. Good drive last time. Really effective passing the football. Do you maybe mix it up, now go to the ground game and surprise the defense a little bit? 
I would anticipate the defense making some changes, but I wouldn't necessarily just absolutely go in the opposite direction. They're doing so well throwing the ball. Yeah, well, I'm I wouldn't it. change it up until they showed me a reason to do so. Again on second and ten, it's Wilson. They'll set up the screen. This is Williams. And he's able to get up here to the 26. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. So many things have to come together just right for a screen pass to break for big yardage. The blocking, the timing of the pass to the runner, everything has to fit together just right. But on that play, the defense was able to disrupt things and hold it to a short game. Ball start. Quinn Miners, third round pick in 2021, called for the penalty. So the false start certainly doesn't help matters as they'll try again now, third and long. To throw is Wilson. And that is incomplete. And that's a really good job there defensively. They went into this possession knowing that they needed to get a stop. They're in a tight ball game and they got it done. Great work to force the three and out. Got the football right back for their offense. They've got to go to the sidelines feeling pretty good about themselves and encouraging their offensive mates to get some points. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. We have played three quarters. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Welcome back now to Denver. And we've got a dandy here. One point game as we begin the fourth. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. Their defense accomplished step one of the mission. They forced the punt. Now they'll look to erase that deficit and take a fourth quarter lead. And they've got it well across midfield down to the 40 before it's all said and done. Good yardage as he rumbles for 24 and a first. You know, I have a pretty good friend, Charles Davis, who tells me that when he sees plays like that, strong runs to the right, reminds him of the 1960s Green Bay Packers. Boy, those were the days back when the fullback actually carried the ball as well as blocked. Then he had a halfback. He had pulling guards, guys who could get out and run. And you can hear the great coach saying it back then. So we get a seal here and a seal here, and we run this play right in the alley. Mullins and a throw here caught by Addison. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. It's another first down as this time they get an even 20. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed too. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. This one caught, it's the tight end, Hawkinson. And the Vikings are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three-yard line. Boy, how about the speed with which this offense can get down the field? It's taken them no time at all to get down here, and now they're set up for the first and goal. And the question now, how do they want to work the clock here on first and goal? A field goal would give them the late lead. They'll try to run with Madison. And they'll get him down just shy of the goal line at about the one. They'll get two out of that run, and it's going to bring up a second and goal. Looking at this now, you got a couple more cracks here. This close, sneak it. I don't think you even go into a huddle. Just line up, snap it, and fall in behind those guys into the end zone. Second and goal from the one. Again, Madison. And I don't think he got in. He did not. They mark him short of the goal line. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. He's having a big game run in the football, but that one will hurt the yards per carry a little bit. Yeah, but the average he's got so far, that's the type of average he wants to take with him to contract negotiations, doesn't he? On third down, they run with Madison. And he takes it into the end zone across the chalk. Now there is a flag down. But I think that's offsides on the defense. Yeah, I think that's going to stand, partner. Offside, defense. So obviously they will decline the penalty there, and the result is six points. So now here are the Vikings faced with a big two-point conversion attempt. They'll try and throw for it. 
is incomplete, so they can't convert for two. And now the lead stays at five. I don't know about you, but I can't wait for a few years of two-point tries and see what the data tells us, because a lot of teams want to throw the ball in this situation, this time unsuccessfully. I just wonder if maybe running the ball might be the way to go. With it moved up from the three to the two, you would think maybe a few more attempts at running. I, I think stats over time may bear out that running the ball will at least be the equal of throwing it in that situation. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. Taken at the goal line. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. And Denver getting set to take the field. And they will be looking to answer the touchdown their defense just surrendered. Still a good chunk of time remaining here in the fourth quarter and a chance to regain the lead in a tight one. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. Now that's how you start a drive. Not only do you pick up a first down, you do it on a chunk play, big yardage, and now you put a little bit of a dent in the confidence of the defense. We couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and 10 here. He's airing it out for Williams. And that's caught inside the 30. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. A huge play there for Denver. And even 40 yards. That could very well be a defining play in this game. A touchdown, that gives them the lead. And they took a major step towards getting there with that big play right there. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. From the shotgun, Wilson. And a quick throw here, that's complete. Now he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Just need a yard here, second and one. Play action, it's Wilson. He'll drop this down to Williams. And the Broncos are gonna have a first and goal as he's taken down at about the eight yard line. He's having a big game through the air and sometimes those smart decisions just dump it off. That's how you continue to have big games through the air. I agree totally. That's, that's a great analogy, a great way to put it because he doesn't get too greedy where everything has to be pushed downfield, trying to create big plays that aren't there. You dump it off and take that nice gain and things add up and now you have the kind of game he's having. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. That seemed to be linebacking 101 on how to diagnose and stop a run. And what we're doing nowadays is we're taking those former safeties, those bigger guys, and making them linebackers to utilize their speed. He just made an absolute beeline after he diagnosed that play and ended up making a nice tackle on it. And he's going to pull his way down to about the one-yard line. 73 yards rushing for him now to this point. For the lead, here's third and goal. Wilson now off the bootleg. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Oh man, for him to be that wide open and drop it. Sometimes you have just too much time on your hands, right? You end up thinking way too much and your hands get shaky. And yes, he's a tight end, but that's a catch he should have made. Here we go, it's Wilson on fourth down. Flush to his, and he'll take it into the end zone for a Denver score. Russell Wilson taking it in from a yard out. And the Broncos answer back with a touchdown of their own to take a fourth quarter lead. And that's a sight we feel like we've seen a lot over his career. But remember for Russell Wilson, 
three in his first year as a Bronco last year and only 15 in the last eight years. But he still knows how to use those wheels when necessary, and he takes care of business right there. They'll look to run for it with Williams. And he'll get into the end zone. So now a field goal would only tie as they up their lead to three. So that effort gives him a three-point cushion and guarantees that a field goal going forward won't beat them. Yeah, that's really good strategy because that's all you care about. Not getting beat at this stage, at least give your team a fighting chance. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Alexander Madison leading this Vikings offense out there to begin the next drive. He's been a good workhorse. I know we use the word workhorse a lot, but he's been a good workhorse for him in this one. No doubt about it, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you're looking for if you're a back, because that means everything's coming together for you big guys up front have created space you've run through it you probably got some help even from the wide receivers who want to catch passes as opposed to block but they're helping out too yeah everyone's pitching in he's had a good game the well, last play got just a yard here's second and nine from the 26 he'll drop to throw middle of the field to jefferson and he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32 Right there, he rose to the occasion late in a close game. It's something he thought about, dreamed about, and worked on throughout his career. Because in these types of situations, he wasn't going to allow extra coverage to keep him from getting the football. And he is caught. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. And that's one of those where it feels like backyard football in a sense. You say, forget about the route. Just run to the open spot in the middle of the field, and I'll find you. Good throw, good concentration on the catch, and they pick up the first down. Now a play fake here on first down. He's going to find Jefferson open downfield. A big play there for Minnesota. 44 yards. The timing was absolutely true as he caught it working across the field. Plenty of space for him to roam, but notice how he keeps his head on a swivel, looking for defenders who may crop up out of nowhere. That turned into a big play. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Back to throw again. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked off by Pat Sertan. And the Broncos are going to take possession here. It's a touchback, and they'll take over at the 20-yard line. As much football as we watch, we've seen this work many times. In the red zone, first down, take a shot at the end zone, and points result. In this case, though, give credit to the defense. They outguessed them, were prepared, and intercepted the pass. Now Cortland Sutton and the rest of the offense getting ready for their next drive. And I know that they double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. Nowadays, quarterbacks don't mind throwing in the coverage because of the confidence they have in their receivers to come down with the ball. But sometimes you have to be careful you don't get too confident and throw an interception. Second and 10, it's Wilson again. And his throw is gonna be incomplete. Well, they approached this drive with a lot of confidence after the last one ended up as a touchdown. But incompletions on their first two throws, has them huddling up and trying to figure out a big play here on third down to get their momentum going again. 
Another incompletion would certainly be ideal defensively. A big play now. This is third and ten. Here's Wilson. A short one of the tight end, Troutman. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. That'll give him eight that time. And it'll be fourth down. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion, and you count on your D to make it stand up. Now on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Vikings will take over here first and ten. Jordan Addison back out now as the Vikings offense set to take possession. They might want to mix something up defensively because he's been shredding them a bit, hasn't he? That he has, and even with all the changes that you know are going on on the defensive side of the ball, he's still finding ways to get open, finding the right spots, and the delivery's been pretty good, too. He's over 100 yards, has the one touchdown score to this point. Well, that was one of the few times they've been able to contain him thus far. He's over 100 yards for the game, but he lost a bit off his total on that carry. Second and 11. And this throw incomplete. Well, the defender all over him that time, and it's going to lead to third down. He was trying to get that one out to his running back out of the backfield, but that one was read and timed perfectly, and they were able to break it up. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. They'll look to throw here. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Everything looked right on that play except the conclusion. He dropped it. An in route going into a little bit of traffic. Maybe in the back of his mind, he was wondering where the hit was going to come from. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. It got his man complete. And he is going to pick up the Vikings first down as they manage to convert. And that'll keep the drive alive. I tell you what, this is not for the faint of heart right here. Fourth down, this is taking a big risk. But it's as good a play call as you can imagine. And the defense just not able to come up with the stop they needed. And this is not just a first down, but a big play as well. Now this offense in good shape. Two timeouts and the two-minute warning. Here's first and ten. Now here's a throw that's complete. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight. Second and two. Eight yards on the pickup. Brings up second and two. At the 30 yard line. They come up now on second and two. Less than two to play with just a field goal separating these two sides. They'll come up now on second down. He's back to throw. Addison holds it in. And this is going to be another first down as he'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 12-yard line. And now all of a sudden, the shoe's kind of on the other foot. Maybe you pull the reins back here a bit? Yeah, a little bit because you got to make sure that you don't score too quickly. Still plenty of time and the two timeouts. Here's first and ten now. They'll look to throw. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. They took their shot for the end zone, almost cost them. And he made the right play there, knocking it away. But boy, it looked like he had a chance to come down with the football. If he does that, this thing is over. Instead, he leaves them out there with another chance. On second down, this is Madison. And he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. Alexander Madison with now two fourth quarter touchdowns. And the Vikings have taken a fourth quarter lead. You get in a second and long situation down here in the red zone, I'd say most defensive coaches would think pass. Let's bring some pressure. So this is kind of a tendency breaker here to hit him with something on the ground, and he'll take it all the way into the end zone.
Joseph now to have the PAT. And that will make this a four-point game. So that drive in total eight plays. And it was capped off by a touchdown scamper from Alexander Madison. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. No run back here, down to a knee, and this drive will start at the 25. So here is Wilson and the Broncos. Down by four, a little over 80 ticks to go. They've surrendered a double-digit lead, but can rescue themselves late as they come up on first down. Able to find Judy, and he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Obviously a big first down right there. Yeah, they still got to hustle. They got to get up to the line of scrimmage and get set. But I don't think necessarily you need to spike it, but they've got to continue to move quickly. Wilson to throw. And his throw is incomplete. Couple extra defensive backs out there in the dive, and because of that, really not many places to throw the football, if any. And typically, what would you want to do against that dive? Run the football. You want to run the ball, but you can't do it in this situation. Not nearly enough time on the clock. You having to really navigate against a tough defense presented against you. Here's Wilson. His throw incomplete. I guess you can't be afraid to take those chances late in the game. He tried to fit that one in there. Nice job, though, defensively. But to your point, it was a nice job of knocking the ball away. But you're also right. You can't be afraid to take those chances. That means your guys going downfield to catch the ball, they've got to elevate their game and come down with these in order to keep your offense moving. Throwing now is Wilson. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. Partner, they've got one chance left to keep this one going, and I think for you and me, let's think along with their offensive coordinator now, has to think back, cycle through every play of this contest, and remember what's worked and what has it, because right here, he needs the best play of the game in order to keep this one alive. Now a desperation throw deep downfield, and he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And that's going to be just about all she wrote for this one. So they would converted their first two fourth down attempts. Not there. Now they're two for three. You think maybe the offense coordinator expended a little capital on that one? <laughs> you know, when you're two for yeah. two, you Got can lock it for that third one, right? Didn't get it there. Maybe now the head coach might not be so eager to go for it as we go forward. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as it'll come with 36 seconds to go in half number two. Down to a knee here. The defense still with a couple of timeouts. We'll see if they want to use them. Now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Victory formation time for the Vikings as they'll take a knee here. Now the Broncos will use their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break.
So he'll take a knee here to wrap this one up, but he's going to want to keep that game ball. He was sensational. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world and get it done, oh, how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. And the kick is good. So you wonder how this one might be remembered the next time these two teams meet. But until then, this game's over. Well, somebody lit a fire under that offense during the break, Charles. Remember, they trailed an intermission. They come out, they have the big second half, and that lifts them to the victory. And Brandon, trailing at halftime, we always talk about teams making adjustments. You know what the best adjustments usually are? It's just executing better. Because the game plan you put in place at the beginning of the week often still holds. You don't have to make wholesale changes. You just have to do it a little bit better, a little cleaner. And they did that in the second half, and that led them to victory.